A hypersonic aircraft is being developed in the USA which can fly from New York to Beijing in just an hour. The SR-72 or Dark Star is the fastest fighter jet in existence. It took more than a billion dollars and 10 years of hard work to develop it. During development, the engineers faced dozens of different problems. The Dark Star was built in the spirit of the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, which once set a world speed record of 2,200 miles per hour. It could have been faster, but its design simply could not withstand higher speeds. At this speed, the aircraft body heats up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. To overcome this barrier, the developers had to create completely new components and materials, which were later used to build the new SR-72. But what really makes Dark Star legendary is its unique engine. To achieve the desired speed of 4,350 miles per hour, the U.S. government had to use all possible connections. As a result, military engineers, Blackbird designers, scientists from Area 51, and even SpaceX had time to work on the new engine. And what we see now is truly impressive. In the past, you may have needed, you know, a whole strike from a carrier to be able to do that. Now you just do it with one airplane. And if even now we're surprised by the performance of the SR-72, imagine how much the world was impressed by the first aircraft turboprop engine. Its history began in 1928, when Hungarian mechanical engineer Georgi Jendrasik invented the world's first turboprop engine and patented his invention. Within 10 years, he constructed a small experimental gas turbine with a capacity of 100 horsepower. This power was categorically not enough to move the airplane, but thanks to the turbine, the engineer was able to conduct dozens of different tests and refinements. Thus, only a year later, Jendrasik managed to create an engine with a capacity of 1,000 horsepower called Jendrasik CS1, which was built at the GANS facilities in Budapest. This innovation caused a real furor, so the military rushed to the inventor with the intention of buying the patent for the engine. However, they were not aware of all the problems of the new technology at the time. The engine was poor, to put it mildly. Due to combustion problems, its capacity turned out to be half of the declared one. In addition, it was constantly breaking down at the most inopportune times. It was dangerous to install such equipment on military aircraft, so further development of the engine was abandoned in the first year of World War II. However, there was still a person who, despite all the complexity and danger, decided to finalize the technology. In 1942, under the leadership of German engineer Max Adolf Mueller, the first mass-produced turboprop engine was created. So you can kind of see how the conventional mindset at the time was like, what, are you crazy? That's never gonna work. He had to almost completely redesign the turbine mechanism and reinforce the casing to avoid breakage. The combustion chamber has also undergone shape changes to achieve acceptable efficiency. Later, Rolls-Royce joined the development, which allocated tens of millions of dollars, which made it possible to install the engine on the world's first mass-produced turboprop aircraft, the Vickers Viscount. It was an airplane with a top speed of 400 miles per hour. But that was just the beginning. The fastest aircraft with such an engine is the Tu-95 with a speed of 590 miles per hour. The turboprop technology has become a new stage in the development of aviation. Because such engines are much more durable than reciprocating engines and have many times higher performance, at the very least, they've shown incredible reliability and in twice the time between repairs. And at the most, the turboprops can be operated very actively and for a long time. Even today, there are airplanes that use this technology, such as the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. This is an American medium and long-range military transport aircraft, which is the most common military transport aircraft in the world. A new Allison T-56 turboprop engine was developed specifically for the aircraft with a maximum power of up to 4,100 horsepower, capable of reaching 430 miles per hour. The most advanced modification of the C-130J, which is in service in more than 70 countries, received new power plants with six-blade propellers completely updated electronic equipment, including a satellite navigation system. The Hercules has been used in all known military conflicts since its release in 1956 and has proven to be an incredibly reliable transport aircraft. 
It's mainly used to transport military troops, ammunition, medicines, and even tanks like the Abrams. It's amazing for such a huge airplane, uh, it really does anything you want. But development never stands still, and even such a cool technology as turboprop engines has been replaced by a much stronger one. In 1921, French engineer Maxim Guillaume received the first patent for a turbojet engine. But it was just a drawing of a turbine and nothing else, so Guillaume cannot be considered the inventor of the gas turbine engine. The first working engine was demonstrated by English engineer Frank Whittle. That's why he went down in history as the inventor of the jet engine. The new technology works on the principle that in order to move forward, you need to throw something back. This is what squid or cuttlefish do, for example. These animals take in water and then quickly throw it out. Same goes for a jet engine. It draws air inside, then compresses it, mixes it with fuel, ignites the mixture, and throws it out at high speed, setting the airplane in motion. The first production jet aircraft took off on May 15, 1943. It was the Gloucester Meteor built in the UK with a W-1 engine. This happened 13 years after Whittle had filed his patent. It took so long to develop the turbojet engine because its inventor had difficulty finding investors or getting the British government interested. The invention of Whittle was noticed only after the outbreak of World War II. In the design of his jet engine, Whittle found a solution to several engineering problems at once. And these solutions were so successful that they're still in use today. For example, the engineer was faced with a question of how to make sure that the combustion chamber of an engine does not burn or melt given a temperature of 1290 degrees Fahrenheit. Whittle came up with an ingenious solution. Many holes were made in the combustion chamber through which air got inside and enveloped the chamber from the inside. Thanks to this solution, the fire does not come into contact with the walls, Despite the fact that such a combustion chamber was invented by Whittle in the 1930s, it's still used today. But what's the advantage of jet engines compared to turboprops? Firstly, the noise generated by turboprop aircraft is much higher and exceeds 140 decibels. It can harm both the person who is too close to the engine and the secrecy of the mission, because the enemy will simply hear the approach of the aircraft long before it comes into view. But the main advantage is speed, of course. Jet power allowed humanity to reach supersonic speed for the first time. The North American F-100 Super Sabre, an American fighter jet that has reached 840 miles per hour, can boast of this achievement. As it was mentioned at the beginning of the video, the current speed record of 3,500 kilometers per hour is owned by the SR-71 Blackbird. This achievement is largely due to the use of a turbojet engine. Moreover, the vast majority of modern aircraft are powered by this type of power plant. Whether it's the incredibly maneuverable F-22 Raptor, the versatile F-35, or even the unique hypersonic Dark Star, they all fly only because of jet engines. And if you thought that the story ends with Frank Whittle's invention, you're wrong. Military engineers are already testing new types of engines that could replace jet engines in the near future. For example, back in 2007, the U.S. Department of Defense launched the Adaptive Versatile Engine Technology Program, which involved legendary companies such as General Electric and Rolls-Royce. The goal of this program was to create an adaptive engine that would reduce fuel consumption by 25%, increase the maximum flight range by 35%, and increase thrust by 20%. The future of weapons could look very different to what they look like today. Um, so we're looking at um, options to have flexible payload bays, have different missiles all contained within it. Another possible option for the engine of the future is the Ionic engine. It's a type of electric motor based on the principle of creating jet propulsion with the help of ionized gas accelerated to high speeds in an electric field. Such engines are already used on space satellites, but their power is still too low to create fighter jets. Perhaps the most exotic but realistic option is the Mercury engine. It's different from anything we've seen before, because it uses mercury that swirls in an electric field. The force of the mercury movement must generate enough power to lift the airplane body. 
However, due to its special shape, aircraft using such an engine will look like flying saucers. Anyway, the history of aircraft engines goes back hundreds of years, and it's only thanks to the hard work of engineers that humanity can feel the freedom of real flight. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave comments and like the video because it's a real engine that helps us create content for you. Have a great day. See you soon.